uh, with regard to serverless, uh, building serverless programs. So today we have uh, John Sakaria Noel. Uh, he is an AWS serverless cloud architect at uh, Mobile Aid Solutions. And also he is an uh, AWS community builder. So uh, after at the end of the session, uh, he will ask some questions and by answering them correctly, you can uh, stand a chance to win uh, uh, $50 worth AWS credits for AWS. So yes, uh, I'll, I'll drop the quiz link to the chat. Uh, you can register it uh, while, uh, while uh, John's doing his session. So yes, without further ado, uh, I hand over to John's to uh, continue the session. Jones? Thank you, Damina. Hi, everybody. So good morning, good evening, good afternoon from wherever you're tuning in. Uh, I'm Jones Zikrai Noel. Now, before we get started, uh, this is about uh, building serverless applications using infrastructure as code. Uh, let me share my screen and we get started. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so, uh, building serverless applications with IEC infrastructure as code. So before we get started, a little bit about me. Uh, I'm John Zidarano, Cloud Architect for Serverless at Mobility Solutions and Services Private Limited, Bangalore, India. Uh, I'm an AWS community builder, uh, an AWS architect, uh, building serverless applications, and I love to advocate about serverless technologies. And you would hear me uh, writing a lot of blog posts on dev to uh, collaborating with UGs and Reskill India, and a hobbyist photographer and a baker. So that, and also an AWS uh, serverless geek. So you can uh, DM me on Twitter. And if you have any quer queries or if you want to connect with me. So the agenda for today is uh, we'll look into uh, infrastructure as code and understand what is infrastructure as code and understand how it helps uh, building applications with infrastructure as code. And we'll look into cer certain providers for serverless. Uh, and also we'll have a deep dive into some CLI with a demo. So looking into infrastructure as code, the first thing uh, that comes into mind when uh, people say infrastructure as code is uh, it's a single source of truth. Whenever you're, you want to deploy applications to the cloud, uh, it's best to do it with infrastructure as code because uh, it is one place which, which is managing provisioning for your AWS resources just with a snippet of code. So this code could be as JSON or YAML files and with also with uh, AWS CDK, it could be in a language that you prefer. So it could be in uh, JavaScript, TypeScript, or it could even be in Python where uh, your complete infrastructure sits in as code itself. So you will have the code to tell uh, the cloud that yes, I'm provisioning for a Lambda function, I'm provisioning for a DynamoDB with certain attributes as the uh, partition and sort keys or what is the tables configurations all of those in a single template file. So when it comes to infrastructure as code, uh, many times it's, it's hard for people to replicate the instances uh, in, in the serverless world when, when it comes to replicating, uh, you would probably have to think like, okay, I'm gonna, it's not, it's not as simple as uh, how, how you would do it with a VM because you're just pulling the image deploying it's not that case because you would have to provision for multiple AWS or it could be any cloud uh, resources. So when you're replicating these resources, the first thing that you would have to do is you would have to either, the first way is going to the console, creating things manually or with the CLI, you'll be running some commands where things are getting provisioned and created in the background. The other way of doing it is with infrastructure store because you will write the complete infrastructure of your application into one file, and that file will be running on the CloudFormation stack, which defines that, okay, I have to provision uh, the X number of Lambda functions or 
uh, all the other resources that are needed with its IAM permissions that are there. So you don't have to worry about, as a developer, you don't have to worry about, uh, okay, I have to uh, create a Lambda function which has an execution role, uh, which has uh, invocation or read and write access to DynamoDB, or it has access to RDBMS, or it has access or something like, uh, I have to create an absent API, which can be which can invoke a data source uh, sitting in Lambda function or DynamoDB. You don't, you don't have to worry about uh, creating such IAM permissions because all these are available predefined. And that's what we'll be seeing in the demo later on, where uh, we'll be creating a Lambda function along with DynamoDB with the Lambda function having DynamoDB access. The other way is uh, when, when you're coming to replicate, uh, you would uh, often things would be like your traditional way of doing things is you would have an account or a region specific for development and one for production. So when you're trying to replicate things from development to production, often things can go wrong is the configuration itself. So when you're doing things with infrastructure as code, you know that the configuration is in your code itself, it's in your template itself, and you don't have to worry about, okay, so uh, what if I forget to configure a uh, Dynamo trigger to my uh, Dynamo trigger uh, on my cloud, or uh, you wouldn't have to worry about such things because it's already defined in your template. And when we're coming to the best practices of uh, delivering uh, applications over CI/CD pipelines, IAC or infrastructure as code is the most preferred method because uh, when you're going through a pipeline and things are automated in the background, you wouldn't have to wait for certain things to be manually created. You wouldn't have to wait for certain things to be uh, running in the uh, running for uh, approvals or things like that. Where all, all things will be automated and it will be running a cloud formation update or create stack in the background. So infrastructure as code has helped things like maintaining a single source of truth where your complete infrastructure could be in your repository. And if you would have to say, okay, I have an application, I want to make it open source and you want to share it with somebody who has to get started with the application. The first way of doing it is create an infrastructure as code take the template and share it over GitHub. So our, our Git repository where uh, somebody who has the code can get started with the complete infrastructure itself being set up. So understand, by understanding what is infrastructure as code and um, certain things about uh, the CICD pipelines also, the way how infrastructure as code helps is uh, it helps in building uh, faster deployments to your cloud. It, it can help in rollbacks. It can help in redeployments. So say if you're if you're building a CI/CD pipeline and uh, it has three or four stages, which has to go and you have to replicate your instance in all those stages. Infrastructure can infrastructure as code that is resided in your in your Git. A uh, repository can help in deploying into multiple instances over a CI/CD pipeline. And also, uh, when it comes to manual provisioning, you wouldn't have to wait for a specific uh, user who's going into the console or into the CLI where they're provisioning things manually. And the best part about it is, uh, as testers, when they are testing in multiple instances or environments, what infrastructure as code has helped them in uh, testing uh, the instances by replicating the production environment into a different instance and test for things like uh, penetration test or doing load testing on that environment so that uh, you, you know that before things going into production, your, your environment or your complete instance is gonna be secure of a lot of things. And this has certainly helped testers to, uh, to test the complete application as a whole from using infrastructure as well. And also uh, with infrastructure as code, uh, since the template has already been validated by the frameworks, different frameworks that are there, uh, it helps in minimizing human errors 
as uh, so say if you were if you are creating some uh, DynamoDB table and you don't know what are the different pricing models and if you type in a random value, of course the technical is going to know that it's wrong and when you're trying to deploy it, it errors out and it even rolls this cloud formation stack even rolls back so that you you don't have half created or partially created uh, instances or partially created environments set up on your cloud. This certainly helps in improvising development practice so that, so say if you have a development team working on a single application, uh, you wouldn't have to worry about uh, replicating all the things to all the developers so that they are on the same page. You can create an infrastructure as code, share it to developers, they can add a few things, they can come into Git, somebody else can pull it and they can update their cloud formation stack. So coming to IAC, uh, so somebody's telling me they're not able to hear me. Um, I, John's, uh, I think uh, I can hear. Can uh, somebody else confirm? I can hear you. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So, uh, coming to infrastructure as code uh, for serverless, specifically for serverless, uh, when you're looking into things, uh, the first way to go is cloud formation, where you can create your, your own template the way how you would want. Design it from the cloud formation template designer on the console. You can take the template and share it with the other developers or other teammates. And also, uh, cloud formation being one of the first steps for creating infrastructure as code. The other providers are things like serverless application model, that is SAM CLI, and cloud formation, uh, cloud deploy, de cloud deployment kit, which is a CDK, Amplify CLI, which is meant for uh, a front end web and mobile uh, framework. This also helps in building full stack applications where you can create your own backend or the server side for your application from the Amplify CLI and deploy Lambda functions. You can deploy apps and APIs, REST APIs or API gateway, everything from Amplify CLI, which under the hood uses cloud formation to deploy your complete resources to the cloud. That is the same with SAM and CDK as well, where uh, they use under the hood, they're using uh, cloud formation itself, where uh, the framework translates your code or uh, the JSON or the YAML code in case of SAM and in case of uh, CDK, your uh, programming language code itself, it translates into a template which CloudFormation can understand in terms of a YAML file. And this template is using uh, CloudFormation to create a stack and deploy to the cloud under the hood. So uh, things like SAM CLI, CDK, and Amplify CLI under the hood uses cloud formation, which is an AWS offering itself. The other things is serverless framework, where serverless framework helps in uh, creating a lot of uh, resources from the serverless uh, package or the CLI itself. Terraform being another uh, IAC provider where uh, you can create your own template and from the Terraform, you can up deploy your complete infrastructure to cloud. So looking into uh, IAC providers, uh, so some of us would have started up being uh, in the serverless world for a while where uh, we started off with uh, creating applications from the AWS console itself where you're creating Lambda function and things like that. So you can probably relate to Iron Man in that case where uh, he was locked up in a cave, he built his own armor, he built his own reactor. And uh, that's probably uh, initial steps is what we would say that uh, as things got uh, more progressive and uh, people started adopting frameworks like SAM and CDK, you, you can imagine that Iron Man built uh, Jarvis, which which is powering and creating uh, other suits for him. So, uh, with with infrastructure as code, it's easy to deploy multiple such instances. Just the way how Jarvis is creating different uh, suits for Iron Man, and uh, all of it is available. Uh, 
available so that our man can just go choose a specific suit and get, get himself suited up. Similarly, you can even create such instances with infrastructure as code and deploy your application to cloud and start using, uh, start replicating and start uh, using your production-like environment into an environment where you would want to test or you would want to develop so that all the in, all the environments are in sync and you know that, okay, if it works in one environment, it should work in the other. In this session, we will be looking into uh, SAMS CLI itself. So uh, in this session, we'll be uh, looking into SAM CLI itself, where uh, SAM or the serverless application model, uh, it's an open source framework by AWS, which uses cloud, cloud formation under the hood. And whenever we are creating a SAM, uh, when we're creating an application on SAM, it, uh, it walks us through a lot of uh, uh, interactive, uh, CLI questionnaires where uh, based on the options that we select, we can create the application or we can get started with a quick uh, sample templates where it supports things like scheduled uh, events or it could be a, a basic uh, hello world function or things like that where it provides certain templates for us to get started with. And also the CLI provides various options for us to uh, build, deploy, and deliver. So in terms of you would want to uh, create a CI-CD pipeline, also uh, SAM supports what SAM pipelines, which can get integrated with your CI-CD providers such as uh, AWS code commit, or it could even be uh, with, with your GitHub actions where uh, based on the actions, the pipeline gets invoked and the whole process goes on. The CLI also provides, uh, the, the, the latest addition to the CLI is also SAM Sync, which allows real-time syncing to the cloud. So let's get started with the demo where we'll be creating uh, just let me know if the terminal is uh, readable. I just hear a thumbs up from. Is is this readable? Level? Yes, yes, George. So, uh, whenever we're creating. So uh, the first way of creating SAM applications is with uh, the SAM CLI and uh, I have my SAM CLI installed and we'll be initializing our application. When we do SAM init, uh, the SAM init itself promises with uh, ways to get started uh, get started with the uh, framework itself. So it asks us if we have if we have to choose with any of the quick start templates or if we have a custom template that's available and we could choose that location and get started. For the demo, we'll be going with uh, a quick quick start template. In the quick start template, we have several different options. Like I was mentioning, uh, you could get started with a simple hello world example, or you could even go with something very complex like a machine learning uh, example also. So we'll just go for the hello world example. And for the runtime, since Python is one of the popular ways it's recommending Python, but we'll go with Node.js 14 and the zip-based uh, package. Since uh, SAM CLI uh, recently started support for uh, TypeScript, you can see that there's a start template for uh, Node.js-based uh, Hello World and also TypeScript-based Hello World. We give it a name.
So while this is taking, if there's any questions, probably I can take it and uh, you can post in the chat and I can probably answer them as things are getting provisioned. Uh, so uh, you can see the application is created and uh, it's also giving us certain details like the name of the application, the runtime, the architecture, and also a Hello World application template. That's, that, that is the one that we uh, chose during the uh, quick start template. So let us go into We can see that it's created a certain things. So firstly, uh, we'll be looking into the template itself. So Sam in it. So Sam init has generated a template for us where uh, it's telling uh, certain resources that we'll be creating as a Lambda function itself. Uh, since we chose the runtime to be Node.js 14, uh, it's using the runtime Node.js 14 with the architecture uh, X20, uh, X20 8664. And, and also, uh, it's mentioning that the uh, code repository for the company Lambda function is in the folder Hello World uh, with the file app.js and the handler being Lambda handler. So here, when we are trying to create, it's creating a Lambda function, which has an event which can be invoked uh, from an API, gate, API gateway. So uh, it's creating a path with Hello and the method being get. Uh, this is invoking the Lambda function. And if once the Lambda function is getting invoked, uh, it's returning a specific response. So sin since these are uh, working with a proxy based uh, event, uh, we would have to return certain headers because uh, the proxy would expect those headers. And when uh, the search after the resources are created, once the uh, Cloud formation stack is updated to the cloud. What it does is it outputs certain details. So what it does here is uh, it's printing up uh, details, things like uh, API endpoint and also the Lambda function on and also the IAM role for the Lambda function. So here once, once we do and we can, we would have to build uh, the application first. So we will go with SAM build. What SAM build does is it completely packages and builds the artifacts so that these artifacts could be uh, used to deploy your complete infrastructure as code. So whenever you're trying to uh, package the complete Lambda function, it's it's building it up and creating a, creating a uh, creating an object on an S3 bucket. And this object is what is uh, internally being used as a code URI uh, for your Lambda function. So you can see that the build command was succeeded and it even created a folder here, which has the build specifications. So once the function is, once the uh, application is built, we'll be deploying it and deploy We'll be going with the guided flare flag. We'll be giving it a name. We'll be going with the USD region. 
and on our confirmation it asks us a certain interactive question is so that uh, even Sam, even the uh, SAM CLI can create IAM rules based for uh, all the deploying of artifacts and also the uh, needed IAM rules for the function execution and also the uh, IAM permission for uh, API gateway to invoke the Lambda function. Since here the API gateway is not authorized, it's even asking us uh, if we would want to proceed ahead being uh, the invocation being unauthorized or not. So we will go with the open API for the moment. Since all these configurations um, can be saved locally so that you, you wouldn't have to go through these questions again and again when we are trying to deploy, we can even save it into a configuration file. So it asks us for a configuration file name. We go with the default environment. We can see that uh, SAM CLI is creating a S3 bucket for storing all the artifacts. On our confirmation, it says, uh, it even gives us the details about the CloudFormation stack itself, uh, giving us the stack name, the region, and the other details about the stack. In SAM deploy, it tells us that uh, since this is an initial deployment, it, all the actions are add. And you can see that uh, these are the following resources that's been created under the hood using AWS CloudFormation uh, stack. So here it's telling, uh, it's creating the uh, Lambda fun function permission. It's creating an IAM role uh, and also a Lambda function itself. Or also the API gateway uh, staging environment deploying and a REST API creation. So on our confirmation, it uses these resources and under the hood, it's using CloudFormation where under the hood, it's using CloudFormation and we can even monitor the real time details of what is happening and how the whole resources are getting created in real time. So we can see that at the moment, the role is being created. So since the role was uh, successfully created, it's creating the Lambda function. Lambda function is successfully created. And the next thing is the API gateway itself. So now that you're uh, now that the complete Lambda function is being created and the complete resources is deployed to the cloud, what it does is uh, from the template we are specifying it to print a couple of details. So uh, these are things that we say has to be an output, and it even displays them for us to refer them. And here uh, you can see that it created a API gateway endpoint, which we can use to do a curl operation. You can see from the curl operation, it's returning the hello world message and also the headers or whatever, what are the other details that we are uh, returning from the Lambda function. So in terms of getting started uh, with creating a Lambda function, having an API gateway as a trigger for a Lambda function and exposing that API gateway with stage so that you can invoke it uh, using curl or Postman or any of the API uh, innovation methods. It, the infrastructure as code has helped us do all of this with a single source of truth, that being the template that we have file itself. So uh, under the hood, you can see uh, it created a lot of AWS resources. So you can see here it has created of AWS IA role, Lambda function, API gateway REST API, Lambda function permissions, API gateway deployment stage. And also it, it is created, it, it's all of this has been executed with a CloudFormation stack. So uh, in terms of a developer getting started with IAC with SAM CLI, 
it's it's very easy for them to get started with a with a template that's already available and uh, they can create all the components they can add all the resources so once once the function once the stack is deployed completely uh, it will even give us the outputs which we can even invoke. So you can see that uh, within within a couple of minutes, we created a Lambda function, an API gateway, and we were even able to curl it into it and get a response out of it. So now, uh, with with that being said, we'll even try to uh, a couple of changes to this Lambda function, and you'll see how the uh, deploy works in terms of whether, whenever there's a change. So I'll be adding a DynamoDB table. So uh, here in the resources, I'm mentioning a DynamoDB table resource. Uh, with the attributes being ID as a string, uh, which which is the primary key itself, and also mentioning the read and write capacity. We'll have a Lambda function, which is doing a put operation also. So. So here we are mentioning a Lambda function, which is so we would have to create this handler file, uh, but in the template we are mentioning that there is another Lambda function with uh, with a handler in Node.js 14 itself with specific memory and timeout configuration, and also we are mentioning a IA policy so that uh, this Lambda function has permission. To create, uh, to to write into DynamoDB. So I'll just be taking the code for put item as well. So here, uh, what we are doing is. Uh, we're using the DynamoDB SDK and writing into the, the DynamoDB table uh, with the parameters that we get. So we are taking the location name, uh, reported on an item. Uh, so we just for simplicity, we just take a location name and uh, write it into DynamoDB. On save, and here you can see that uh, we are even returning a response, uh, so that uh, we know that the execution is uh, completed and the record is being inputted into Dynamic. We'll again go with SAM deploy guided. So here it asks us uh, if we if there's already a configuration file that that is there and it has found it and it's also asking us for a stack name. We'll go with the configurations that's there. Uh, so since this is checking for the SAM build itself, I just let's do SAM build. 
So uh, the complete template has been validated against the build file. So uh, every time there's a incremental changes that we're doing to the code in terms of the template or adding uh, new code, uh, new code or new uh, uh, Lambda functions itself. So there's a question uh, asking about, uh, is it a good approach to disable rollback? Uh, so in, in a production environment, uh, it is not, but since it's for a demo, I'm just disabling. So the file is, the complete application has been built. We'll deploy it. So let me go with disabled rollback as no. So now, now that it detected that there are two Lambda functions, it's asking me uh, if it's okay that the authorization is not there for both of them. So uh, after this build, uh, you can notice that uh, we made some modifications to the template and the SAM CLI detected there were certain things that are getting added and there are certain things that are getting removed or modified. And there are certain things, uh, all these uh, details are available so that uh, it's using the same CloudFormation stack where uh, every time we are doing any incremental changes to it, uh, it's identifying what are the changes and updating to that same CloudFormation stack so that it's one single stack for your complete application that's there. Once we confirm, we deploy these change set. It performs a CloudFormation update stack where it creates whatever is newly added and it updates whatever is uh, modified in this incremental mode. Any other questions? So you can see that uh, the complete stack was created, uh, the complete stack was updated and it's outputting details such as, uh, such as the API gateway endpoint itself and also the Lambda function on that's that uh, for the hello world function that we had created before. So now let us try invoking this. We'll put it into Postman and we'll do a Put operation for the Lambda function. So here we are telling the part to be the root itself. 
and put the body in our plastic bags. So uh, what in the lambda function, what we are doing is uh, we are returning the parameter itself. So uh, since the body, uh, we're returning the complete body that we are receiving, all this function, all the, uh, all the parameters that is received is returned as it is. Now that uh, the function is writing into Dynamo, we'll update the template uh, to have a function that lists all the items in the time table. So we have the create a JS file inside Hello World. So here it will just scan the table and return all the items. What we're doing here again is uh, we are providing the policy so that um, so that the complete DynamoDB table is available. We do a sum. You can notice that now there is three function handlers that's been built. And if again asks us uh, if it's okay for us to uh, proceed without the authorization for our under function invocation or for public APIs. So you can even notice that uh, when the file is being synchronized to the S3 file, S3 bucket. Uh, what is happening is since there was no change to a to to, to the two lambda function handlers, it skipped them and it only uploaded the one that was changed. So it's again performing a cloud formation update stack and updating all the new things that's there.
So Zach is in the audience. So hi, Zach. So you can see that uh, the complete CloudFormation uh, updates that was succeeded and it even uploaded the Lambda functions such that we'll try to do a get. Uh, since we're using the same path uh, and different method, we'll just change it to get and oops. So uh, some some configuration has been mismatched, so it's uh, not able to fetch the complete request, and it's throwing a forbidden error. Uh, since it was a get method and I was passing the body, uh, it was trying to uh, pass it, but API Gateway was throwing an error uh, since get methods don't require a body that's that's being sent. So you can see that uh, in a matter of minutes with a single file itself, uh, we were able to create a Lambda function, create three, three different Lambda functions, which is uh, performing uh, one just to display a hello world message, uh, one to write into DynamoDB, one to fetch all the items into DynamoDB, and also create the DynamoDB table also in the same template. Uh, that's how simple things are with creating uh, applications using SAMP CLI. And that's about the demo. That's about it. So. Uh, about the session, uh, I, I hope that you learned a lot about uh, what infrastructure as code is and how you can use infrastructure as code in a SAM application and uh, build and develop with it. Uh, thank you, John. Actually, uh, that was a really informative session. So guys, uh, I think it's time for some questions. If you guys have any questions, you can uh, either unmute yourself and ask, or else uh, you can drop it to the chat box. So, uh, yes. And I do have one question. Yes. Uh, John, so yeah. Uh, so we know we can uh, manually uh, use the console and manually configure these uh, serverless things. So, uh, if you are going to use IAC in uh, AWS, mm -hmm. uh, will it affect to our uh, costing actually? Uh, so... okay. uh, you can see that uh, there were under the hood certain resources that got created. So if you're creating a Lambda function from say a console, you wouldn't create a, a repository or a, a S3 bucket where all your build files are there, right? So in terms of those, there would be additional costing, but there is very, very minimal. Okay. Thank you, Pupadu. So, Thank yes. you, Zach. Yes, uh, guys, yeah, do you have any questions or? Yes, let's see. Um, hi, Jones, a quick question. Uh, so I've been using uh, serverless framework and CDK for some time. And, you know, in serverless uh, framework, we have lots of plugins that is uh, like developed by the community. And um, in SAMS, I was just wondering, like, uh, there are a couple of abstractions, but uh, like, you know, the simple table and uh, all that. Uh, if we wanted to go with, let's say, other services, is it, or do we have to use CloudFormation all the time? Or are there any, uh, you know, plugin system or something like that, that we can uh, make use of in SAM as well? Mm, okay. So... Uh, let me just rephrase the question. You're asking if it's uh, does SAM support things like creating uh, SQSQ with a uh, command or something, but instead you don't have to go create 
uh, with the with the cloud formation template itself. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Any abstraction uh, without we have to write the entire cloud formation uh, for other services. Yeah. Uh, currently, as per my knowledge, uh, cloud formation is the way on SAM uh, until SAM comes up with uh, updates where uh, you can start creating resources from command line itself. Uh, although you can do things like invoking a Lambda function with a even JSON that's there. And uh, also there's certain things where uh, uh, you can even, uh, you can even uh, build container-based applications also on uh, SAM. I mean, uh, Lambda functions powered with container images. Yeah, uh, thanks, uh, Jones. One other question, does uh, uh, SAM support local development, like locally emulating functions? And uh, that's my first question. The other one is, uh, do you sort of recommend uh, using, uh, you know, the local development, uh, particularly when you are building serverless applications? So uh, local development uh, is good because everything is on your computer, but, but to test them, it's always best to do it on cloud because uh, with, with local development, you're only simulating things with uh, certain events or certain things, but when it's actually on the cloud, uh, things can be different uh, because uh, you say, for example, you're trying to simulate a Dynamo trigger uh, to your Lambda function. You can prepare the complete event JSON that's there and invoke the Lambda, but uh, if there is any additional changes to the parameters or your complete uh, a new image or the old image, what uh, DynamoDB sends is different. There could be change, there could be in scenarios where your Lambda function would break. So in terms of uh, testing your function for uh, the functionality or uh, in terms of just doing a unit test, local testing is good, but otherwise it's always recommended to test on the cloud. Makes sense. Thanks, uh, Jones. Awesome. Yes, uh, uh, is anyone having a question? Or else uh, I think uh, we can move into the quiz. Okay, I think uh, no one has any more questions. Okay, uh, so uh, continue with the questions. I invite Chamira. Thank you, Nimna, and thank you, Jones, for the session. And uh, guys, uh, today we have a bit different format of our quiz session. So uh, Jones have prepared seven questions, and uh, we have prepared the quiz using Conf Hub. So I can see that there are several guys who have